Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing average rate of change. So what is average rate of change? Well, the average rate of change is how much a function has changed per unit on average over an interval. It's derived from the slope of a straight line connecting the interval endpoints on the function's graph. So typically when we see it written, we're going to see something that will have our function, and then it'll say on the interval from here to here. So for example, if this one said on the interval from 0.25 to 1, what this means is from x being 0.25 here until x is 1, we want to look at what is the average rate of change for this gap. And that average rate of change is going to be the slope of the straight line connecting the intervals and points. So what that means is we're going to have a straight line here connecting those points. And that line there, whatever that slope is, that is going to be our average rate of change. So in this case, we can look and see that our slope, it goes down three over three. So our average rate of change is the slope or negative one. So using that idea, we kind of have three different ways that we can find the average rate of change. Sometimes we're gonna do it when we're given a graph. Sometimes we'll do it when we are given a function and an interval, and sometimes we can do it when we're given two points, and we'll see that when we're looking at a, at a word problem. So let's first start by finding the average rate of change when we're given a graph. So just like in the previous problem, here we are looking at the average rate of change between these two points. Now here there are two points that we can look at. We either have, we have the point 0, 6 and the point 5, 2. Now there's kind of two things we can do. We can either use our average rate of change equation to calculate that distance, or we can just count. If we want to use our average rate of change equation, the average rate of change is going to be the change in our y values over the change in our x values. So the change means the difference. And a lot of the time we write that to find the slope of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's what we're going to do here. So option number one, do it that way. So let's try it. Our average rate of change is going to be y2, which is 2, minus y1, which is 6, over x2 minus x1. So this ends up getting us a negative 4 fifths. Now we can check to see if that's the right thing doing our other method, which is just counting. So right here, we go down 4, and over five. And remember, slope is rise over run. And so that's how we end up getting that four fifths, that negative four fifths as well, is we went down five over, or down four over five. So what I want you to do is I want you to find the average rate of change of this next problem, number 10. And we're looking at these two points, this one right here at negative one zero, and our other point up here at five, four. So you can decide how we find the average rate of change. You can either count it like this and determine it that way, or you can use our equation. I'm gonna, I want you to pause the video, calculate that out, and when you finish, unpause the video and we'll go over it together. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to go over that average rate of change problem. Now again, there are two ways that we can solve these. We can either do it using the average rate of change equation here, with, in which case I get two over three or two thirds. In our other method, we can just count on our graph and we get that same thing. We either go up four over six, which simplifies to two over three, or we can count this up two over three, up two over three, but that's our slope is that two thirds. So that is option number one on how we find average rate of change. Go ahead and check out the next video on how we find the average rate of change when we're given a function and an interval that we're trying to find the average rate of change.